Bun găsit, doamnelor și domnilor, o emisiune la care vom încerca să vorbim despre afaceri, despre cum poți să devii om de afaceri în România, despre ponturi care să-ți aducă succes în afaceri, despre ce ne apropie și ce ne desparte de lumea startup-urilor de aici și din Israel sau de oriunde din Occident, de exemplu, despre ce avem de învățat de la alții, despre ce greșeli să nu mai repetăm și despre ce ar trebui să facă statul român să dea o mână de ajutor propriilor tineri care ar vrea să investească și care ar vrea să rămână în România, dar adeseori se simt alungați de aici, de acasă, de la ei. Vorbim despre toate acestea și probabil multe alte lucruri pe care încă nici nu le bănuim cu un invitat, să-i spunem noi, mai special, pentru că nu întotdeauna vine în studioul TVRIA și un om de afaceri din Israel care e considerat așa un fel de guru al antreprenorilor pentru că a pus bazele multor acceleratoare de afaceri din Israel și de asemenea a stat la baza multor startup-uri din Israel, dar și din Letonia, Estonia, Finlanda, Rusia, India, China și veți vedea chiar și din România. Este și un cunoscut, recunoscut TEDx speaker și doamnelor și domnilor, dați-mi voie să vi-l prezint pe domnul Tal Catran. Welcome to our studio. Um, who is actually Tal Catran? <laughs> Okay, um, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm enjoying so far. I've been here two days in Yash, and um, I really feel at home since my origin is from Romania, and the food and smells and people is something I'm uh, very uh, familiar with. Um, myself, well, um, I will go fast forward to the years, um, like uh, last eight years, I've been dealing with uh, startups and accelerators. Um, well, I myself started to mentor startups, which was like to give them a device from my experience as a business person. And the more I dove into this um, ecosystem of startups, of young people having the ability to develop technology, the more I got interested really on the business side. And I found that they need a lot of support on that part, on that subject, and little by little, I decided that acceleration, which I had no clue about, those programs which are four to six months, that support, help, teach mm -hmm. startups more on the business issues, less on the technology. And I started, uh, opened my first, it was um, uh, not too many years ago, 2012. Mm -hmm. And when you think about Israel being the startup nation, just for having the most number, like 6,000 startups, per capita of uh, 9 million. But actually it's not 9 million that do startups in Israel, it's only a community of 350,000 people. That's it, okay? So I got into this and, and I thought, what is it exactly, who can teach me? And well, USA, they're the leaders and they're the, the concept of accelerators uh, was already there quite developed. So my first program here, uh, first accelerator in Israel was actually an American program that was uh, brought to Israel. And well, I enjoyed it very much and so did the startups and little by little it grew up to be, well, I'm about to open my number 13 uh, accelerator for, for startups. Uh, personally, I live in Ramat Gan, which borders Tel Aviv. I have a, a lively a wife, her name is Karen. Her parents come from Romania yeah. as well. Her mother comes from... Your biography is related uh, to Romania. Yeah, so we have everything like related um, and have three kids. And uh, listen, my life is about traveling every three weeks to some, some other country, mm -hmm. sharing my knowledge, running accelerators, working with startups, and it's fun. I'm curious, uh, you are called a guru of uh, entrepreneurship. Um, how do you distinguish um, yourself from other entrepreneur from Israel yeah. or from all over the world. So, so the, the guru actually comes from the acceleration part, mm -hmm. meaning I've opened, as far as I know and people tell me, the most number of accelerators in the world, mm -hmm. in the world for one person, as I said, 13 of them. So having such a deep understanding on the business model of those programs, how they should be run, what are the targets, how to reach those targets, how to really deliver the support and help that startup needs in, as part of this program. 
I think this deep knowledge uh, also won me this guru term. So you have the key of success. I have the key. Do I have? I think I do. I mean, <laughs> I use it every day, even coming and here. It works. OK. Uh, what differentiates um, a part um, startup from Romania um, comparing to a startup from Israel? I think I need to put something in perspective. We all say startup and we think technology. Mm -hmm. Startup is more people mm -hmm. than technology. People are the ones inventing the idea. Yeah. People are the ones. But it's not enough to have a good idea. Exactly. <laughs> but you need to have the capability, and this capability comes from people. Mm -hmm. So, startups, first of all, need to remember this is people. So, when you say how different they are, what you're asking me is not how the, the, the technology is different, how people are different. What is it in their genes, in their core, which is different? Um, culture, mm -hmm. not the language part, but culture, motivation, sense of urgency. You know Israel. Israel in most times is not this 100% secure that everything is going to be fine. There's a lot of uncertainties. Romanians, well, probably Maybe. here nothing much <laughs> will change. You can do whatever you want in your own pace. There is no urgency. You're not really competing, not between yourselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't think even in the world, you have what you have and you're very good about it, which is a puzzling because you have so much capabilities. And I know because this is not my first time in Romania. I've been in and out in Romania. Been to Cluj, been to Sibiu, been to Bucharest, of course. I work with many startups that you have here, and I know people are the same as us. I mean, if you were to come to Israel, people will speak to you in Hebrew just because you look Israeli. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also have here bureaucracy and uh, complicated and unpredictable uh, mm -hmm. legislation. News flash, we have the same. Yeah. <laughs> All the world has the same, but when you're inside your country, everything seems to be, oh my God, so difficult. Everything is like against you. Well, the news flash is it's the same everywhere in the world. The only difference is the people. What do you do about it? When the tough, when, when the, 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 the way is becoming tough, I mean, do you go, ah, not for me, it's too hard. Or you go, you know what, I will do something about it. And you unite. You have others that help you. Well, currently we're a global village. Mm -hmm. We can speak to one another, phone, WhatsApp, Skype, Zoom. It's no, it's no issue. When we, when we move together, when we unified, we are stronger. And startups do that. It's just because they share so many problems and so, much, so many difficulties, which are the same to all. You just need someone to tell them, unite. And I think this is something we need to do here. So we need a good idea, uh, a new idea. Uh, Not a new, but a good, non good, new. Good. No new. And uh, people. Mm. Which people? Educated, number one. Mm -hmm. Motivated, having the ability to work independently. In a way, the perception is that startup people, founders, they need to be able to move mountains. Where in reality, no one can really move a mountain. But you can see a mountain and say, ah, and go, and go back. Or you say, you know what, let me dig under, maybe around, maybe I'll fly over. This is where entrepreneurs as people are different than other people. They see a problem, they deal with it. They come, they, if this is the box, they go out of the box just to look and say, okay, inside I can't see everything, but from here I see much more and get something creative. This is an ability that not everyone has. The ability to wake up in the morning and understand how difficult your life is just because you don't have a cent to your name, you're poor. Okay? Mm -hmm. The entire world is smarter than you. He knows to do everything better than you. And in Romania's case, currently still, there's no one to help you. Who do I turn to? Who do I say, please help me? Well, in Israel, for instance, the ecosystem is much more evolved. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people to discuss with. This is happening here. I can tell you it's happening in Bucharest. What I want, I want it to be stronger in Yash. It's strong in Timisoara. It's strong in Cluj Napoca. Yash, wake up. <laughs> so you recommend us uh, to move in Israel. <laughs> ah, so yeah. I said it yesterday, I did not mean it. No, don't move to Israel. I think Israel is 
um, will be glad to come here just because, well, I flew here two and a half hours from Tel Aviv. That's it. <laughs> two and a half hours? Oh, my God. It's so easy. But you need to be welcoming. You need to be on board. You need to be obligated, committed to a way. Not to say, okay, come here and then we go back. And that's, it's not for pizza and beers, right? It is for a long-term relations. We know how to structure it. We need you to invite us. Uh, you say um, people uh, who want to be a businessman um, have to be educated, but uh, Romanian school uh, teach the young people for this, for entrepreneurship. I wouldn't know if they do. I, I would recommend they start. Uh, in Israel, we start age 15 and up. Okay. Um, I think education-wise, I know on the technology capabilities, there are tons of capabilities here. I, no one can doubt this, okay? Mm -hmm. But as you said, it needs this additional sauce, this secret mm -hmm. sauce that make an entrepreneur different. I think this, uh, I, I think, can be taught. I know I, this is what I do. I know that some of the people I've met during these two days I'm here, hundreds of people, by the way, Yes, there were few of them standing out of the crowd, the one who made the effort to call me, mm -hmm. to wait after a lecture to the door like this and like look at me with those sad eyes, please talk to me, and I talked to them. These are the ones that are different. It's not like everyone there is an entrepreneur, but yes, education is a must and lets us be focused again. Schools and universities, your job is to ace, I'm saying to the, to the students, your, your job is to ace your studies. You need to be the best engineer you can. I don't care what. Yes, become an entrepreneur, but do not be mistaken. You go to university to get a profession, to learn, to, to be educated. Entrepreneurship, well, it's a kind of a, a bug, a virus that you have from within that can be enhanced. If you don't have it, you're healthy. It's okay. You don't have to have it. But if you have it, enhance it. Take the plunge and try. Failure is a big issue. 96% of startups fail first year. So you might say to yourself, why should I go there and start a startup? I have 4% of, to succeed. What's the sense? Let me work for Amazon, IBM, Facebook, whatever. Let me push some papers. Let me program something. I'm good enough. I'll have, well, you see it maybe at home. I don't know. Tell me if your son or daughter would come to you and say, hey, mom, I've got this great idea for a startup. Well, I'm told in Romania, the answer would be get a real job. What's a startup thing? Go work for something that is secure. Well, entrepreneurs by nature are different. And you have them here. I met them. I know they're different. Education is important. We've got in Israel everything formatted and structured need to be adapted to what you're accustomed to and take it forward. When we are uh, thinking uh, at um, some like of business, we, um, we want to have fast success. We want uh, to make fast money, but uh, success mean it's meaning about money or validated by the market an idea your business. First of all, you said it very right. Current generation is different than the older generation. How do I know? Older generation, when they started a business, they thought they will get a salary from the business and they will pass it on to their son mm -hmm. and also to his daughter. Startups? Do you think there's any startup that dreams to take a salary from where? He's just working to develop something and he thinks within three months, six months, he will sell it and be a billionaire. Well, that's the idea. That's the concept. It doesn't happen to so many. Okay. So yes, what you said is right. And I will translate meaning since the odds are against you, since you will probably fail, at least enjoy the way, get the validation. Get the validation that maybe not on the idea itself, but on yourself. Do you have those special genes to walk this way? And although you will fail, which is fine, a failure is a major milestone for success. It's a, it's a, it's a step that you need to go through. Not be, a, be, be afraid of, to, to fail, you need to fail. It's a must in entrepreneurship because then you are born stronger, You stand up again, 
you're a different person, you have more experience, and all of a sudden you find yourself teach others why you failed. I don't know if you know this, there is a conference called FailCon. It's all about failure. You have it here in Romania. People just don't know. They go on stage and they speak their failure. There's nothing bad in sharing your failure. It just shows you're stronger. I, I hope people know this here. But our young people go abroad for a good career, for uh, uh, wages, for um, salaries. Um, and uh, also um, they go abroad after they graduation here. Why? And uh, how the state could stop them here? So what you're saying is that people that naturally would love to stay here in Romania because this is their home, yeah. the families are here, but right. maybe finding a job suitable to them. Maybe they think they need to earn this and not this. Well, first of all, it happens everywhere. Don't say the word immigration or this and that. Yeah. People will always follow the potential of earning more money and living a good life. But Still, we have three or four millions Romanian abroad. I think the fact that this is happening is not too alarming for me. I know that for years Romania reached 23 million and now it's about 20 and I understand what you're saying. I think that when you think about startups and entrepreneurship, well, startups are considered a growth engine within every economy. A startup, different than a company, needs help all the time. He draws in help. He needs the freelancers. He needs the lawyer. He needs the accountant. He needs the business development, the marketing. He's drawing in. So when you start an ecosystem for startups, no one would like to live the opposite, that would like to come in with the potential and opportunity, yes, of becoming rich. This is part of the game in entrepreneurship. You leave your desk job and you take a huge risk because you think there is an opportunity or potential for you to be rich. So the fact that people are living, I can tell you, you will see it very soon, people will return to Romania. Not because they, because they realize that when you sum up everything, being in your home nation with your family is much more important than earning additional 1,000 euros. This is my thinking. Do I have a plan how to solve it? I think startups can really be those, this engine that will enlarge uh, 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 jobs. I mean, you will have more employment places just because startups do that. You start with two, then you become four, then you become six. What the, the government needs to do? Support your ecosystem. Give the startups the ability to grow. They will create the jobs. They will not stay two people. They will like to be 15, 20, 60, 70. But the government will say, giving you the money if you stay here. You don't relocate after I give you the money. This is the deal. And you will see the Romanians outside of Romania rushing in. Just an idea, just a thought. Just an idea. How important is uh, the state uh, to um, support the research? I ask you because uh, the Romanian government um, has allocated uh, the um, lowest budget from Europe for research. Mm -hmm. Did anyone ask the government why? <laughs> yes, have... a lot of uh, journalists. I'll, I'll, okay, I don't know the answers. You know I don't know, but I'll give you my thoughts. They thought. don't have money. And they don't it's have It's not money. a priority, I suppose. Okay, I, 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 I don't think they don't have the money. I hmm. think priority is mm -hmm. the word, okay? Israel puts or gives government 4.3% of GDP money mm -hmm. back into the ecosystem. We are leaders in the world, okay? Mm -hmm. Understand the number, 4.3%. Why is it? Our government sees the startup ecosystem, the high-tech ecosystem, as a good investment. And they see an ROI. What is an ROI? Well, you know, we have what is called unicorn. Currently in Romania, everyone speaks about the startup that was a huge unicorn, which is a uh, valuation of a company of a billion dollars and up or exited, being acquired by a billion and up. Mm -hmm. In Israel, 
government knows that if a company is acquired in such a price, it gets taxes. If you're a local, if, if the company is outside of Israel, although it's, it's, it's like Israelis run it, mm -hmm. our government sees nothing. But if it's located in Israel, it needs to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. If you think that in 2017, we have done close to $30 billion of exit. Just think about taxes, how much money was left. A. So if the government here sees a plan, not a plan that it co the government constructed, but the ecosystem constructed. The startup came to the government and said, this is our plan, and we're going to show you the return on investment. You invest in us, and you'll get rich back. If the government sees that kind of a commitment, it should give the money. I remind you, your government money comes from taxes. Your government needs to report to its citizen what it's doing with the money. If the, if the environment, if your population does not believe in startup, if I'm the government and I'm saying to, I gave it to startups, your citizens go, are you crazy? Who did you give the money to? Those 25, 26 year old? What do they know about business? Okay, you, you know because you understand it needs to be in a different way. This needs to be constructed. It's not a whim. I had an idea, let's do, no. We build a plan, we have a plan, and we'll implement and get it done. You also uh, support the Innovation Labs program. Um, how does offer this program for the young people? First of all, we as I said, I think um, we in Israel believe in starting young. We understand yeah. it's a process. It's not overnight. And in a way, Israel started as a startup, if you would think about it for a second. Um, and I think that the understanding that you need to really invest practical, you need to do in order to get back, mm -hmm. not just, okay, I agree with you, you do. No, I do with you, is the fact that we really strongly believe uh, in entrepreneurship as a virtue, as something that is in our blood, in our genetics, you would say. Maybe, again, coming from the sense of urgency is that we don't have any other choice. If we will not develop by ourselves, would be a time that we would turn for help for the countries who promised. They will go, can not help you now. We can have it. We, we're a nation. We need to protect ourselves. We need to be able to do things. So we train our, our young. And I remind you, army in Israel is mandatory. Age 18, boys and girls, they all recruit. That stops your life right in the middle. And all of a sudden, you belong to the country. You belong to the nation. You say, bye-bye, mom and dad. I'm in the army now for three years. See you when I see you. This is also part of understanding that in order to receive, you give. Mm -hmm. And you give something which is the most precious sometimes. It's your life. But when you live in this kind of an environment, well, I think you see results. And I'm telling you right off. We have all the difficulties, all the bad thing, if you would like, like every other country. We're not that unique, but we do it in a maybe a different way, and we show success. And you know, success has many fathers. The orphan is the failure. Yeah. So we are pushed to success, and Innovation Hub starts young for kids, start young for entrepreneurs, they grow up. They know entrepreneurship. They want to have startups as a way of, yes, this is an option. I want to learn my profession in university, but university will also let me build my own business, my own startup, my own technology startup. I think this is not too, too it's not rocket science. Try it. We met um, uh, here at uh, Tevere Yash um, a few uh, young uh, people uh, involved in um, Innovation Labs. Um, and um, they need to convince the investors, private investors, not only the state. Um, but in Romania, the investors uh, do not have the courage to risk. So how do we convince them to risk in the young people, their ideas? I think that it is very convenient to say the problem is not with me, it is with them. Mm -hmm. I'm a great startup. Problem mm -hmm. is the investors, they're scared. How about the fact that you have a lousy idea, 
Maybe they said no, not because they're scared, because they think you have nothing, because your technology is not that exciting, not because they don't have. So how about we start by saying not they're afraid or shy to take a commitment, because believe me, I have met with businessmen in Romania. I have done business in Romania, and I know for a fact that when I presented the idea, and it makes sense, and they were with the feeling that I know what I'm doing, okay? It was not me putting money, it was them putting the money, but realizing that I know, A, what to do with the money, I respect their time and money, and I will take care and just keep my word to what I said. So I say to start off, first of all, shut, I mean, look at yourself, look in the mirror, tell yourself, did I do everything right? Was I there before I say he was, he is the one uh, not doing it, not doing what I expect of him to do? And second, take it one step at a time. You don't need to raise a million dollars tomorrow morning. Start with 20, 50, start small. Build the confidence, show them that you know what you do, A and B. Maybe you need to be able to show that you can bring some of your own. You don't need to match. You bring me 20, I bring you 20. No, you bring me 20, I bring just five. Was that me? I mean, I'm bringing you what I have. Think, as a person, would you look different? I think you would. Just try it. The last question, where do you see over five years? I hope to be here many times. I hope to come again and again and maybe come with my family and enjoy what you have here in this lovely, lovely ash. Mulțumim foarte mult și mulțumim și telespectatorilor. A fost un discurs motivațional al lui Tal Catran, omul care încurajează românii inteligenți, românii educați, românii care au un pic de nebunie și ceva mai mult curaj să-și înceapă propria afacere, să renunțe poate la o slujbă de funcționar public bine plătit în acest moment, dar cu perspective mult mai bune într-o proprie afacere, într-un startup, de ce nu? Mulțumim foarte mult că ați fost alături de noi, toate cele bune!